Peace, peace. What's good, family? This is your boy, Solar Mind. Uh, this is another edition of Solar Vision Debate League. I am live here with Brother Mikael and Brother Yakim the Submitter. We're getting a little late start tonight. You know what I'm saying? You know, my brother on the West Coast. So we had to, you know, get this whole thing situated. So when you come in the building, hit the like button, hit the like button when you come in the building. Tonight, they will be debating the Bible versus the crown, which is better for our society. So this should be a very, very interesting debate, family. So uh, when you come in the building, make sure you show some love to the family. This is Solar Vision Debate League. So give me one quick second. While well, I take care of some business, I'm gonna post the I'm gonna post the link inside the chat so you brothers can share it on your social media page. Um, before we get started, uh, just to let you know, we're gonna be rocking out uh, once again. Um, that's what we do always. We try to keep this thing on a daily basis. Give you a link, you know, at least you know. A debate a day keeps the cracker away. You know? A debate a day keeps the cracker away. You know? So, yes, so yes, it's going to be a late start today. But um, shout out to the family still. We're going to be still rocking. The link is in the chat room. Mikael, so you can go share it on your social media page and do what you got to do. So we can do what we got to do and get this thing started. All right. Once again, the topic for the debate is, I mean, the topic for tonight's debate is Bible versus the crime, which is better for our society. Um, we're going with the standard format tonight. That will be the five minute opening, 10 minute premise, 10 minute rebuttal, 15 minute rapid fire, five minute closing, and then we'll get to the interrogation and then the voting um brother mikhail has a lot of y'all can the submitter the opportunity to go first and uh we're gonna rock out like that we got a one judges voting system tonight so that would mean that each category peers peoples and uh judges is worth one powerpoint as y'all should know by now that the judges is worth 30 voting, 30 voting points, just in case we have a tie. Um, so, with that being said, we're going to get this thing started right away. Um, let me set this timer for five minutes. Brother Yai Kim, the submitter. Whenever you're ready, brother, you can begin. I'll meet your mic. Y'all can. I'm your mic, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. You hear that? All right. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you all. Yes, me Allah, Rahman, Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Ashadu Allah, illaha, illallah. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah. I give all praises and glory to Allah alone. I believe in all. Prophets and messengers of Allah, making no distinction between them, only submitting to Allah alone. I believe in the angels of Allah, the scriptures and revelations, and the inevitable day of judgment. I strongly advocate the worship of Allah alone by establishing salat, as your prayer, and zakat, as your charity. I implore Allah to be amongst those who strives in his cause, to establish truth and justice and the covenant of Shalom by working, striving, immigrating, and fighting in his cause to establish the worship of him alone. Thank you for the opportunity again to be a part of the establishment of truth by participating in uh, the Solar Vision Debate League. 
I welcome all those who are present to witness the efforts to establish truth in the name of Allah and to return to Allah by, by obeying his words. Once again, thank you, Soleimani, for hosting the debate. Thank you, Mr. Mikael, for agreeing to be a, an opponent. <clears throat> I implore Allah that we can have a productive and enlightening debate this evening. The objective of this, uh, or the topic of this debate is the Quran, or the Bible, which is better for our people. It is, it is my plan to demonstrate that the idea of the Quran, or the concept of the Quran, uh, was foretold in the Torah. We can define the term Quran using the Torah. And it leads us to salvation while we are scattered here amongst the Gentile nations. It is the best source uh, uh, towards salvation uh, for it is the complete, fully detailed scripture from Allah. In, in, in contrary, or in comparison to the Bible, the Bible is the combination of the Torah and falsehood, which um, those may claim to want to follow the New Testament. Uh, the New Testament uh, is uh, a testimony written by man uh, referring to an event or a series of events that was specifically um, directed to the children of Israel, but the Gentiles wanted a, a, a way in which they can attain salvation. So through hearsay, uh, they took the story of the Messiah, son of Mary, um, twisted it and added their falsehood uh, and created uh, false scripture um, to combine with our scripture to um, create what we now call the Bible. Uh, again, uh, my plan is to um, show the De definition of the Quran um, and use the Quran to um, prove that it is the best source as well as using the Torah. Uh, I, I will challenge my opponent uh, to show and prove the concept of the Bible, to teach to the people using any scripture the concept of the Bible. Um, and if he cannot do that, then um, we must conclude that the source that proclaims that it is the best source. There's only one book that dares to proclaim that it is the best source for salvation. And uh, if we choose to ignore and disbelieve in that one book, uh, then we are just following in the footsteps of our ancestors uh, in rejecting the prophets and messengers uh, and the message that they brought um, all right, all right. Shout out to the, shout out to the family. Um, we're gonna hand this thing over to Brother Mick Kyle. Um, once again, we'll set this time for five minutes. And uh, Brother Mick Kyle, whenever you're ready, you can begin. All right, yeah. Long shalom, grace and peace. All praises to the Elohim, Elohim, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and name of Son Jesus Christ, uh, which is our High Priest. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I just like to say to everybody, I thank y'all for listening. Thank you for having me on the platform. Let's get straight to the business. Uh, well, I will. I'm, I'm basically making a stance that, uh, without a doubt, uh, the Holy Bible is not only uh, the solution for us, but it tells the story of this condition that we're in. Um, it's, I'm going to say, to be honest, I give my brother a lot of respect and love to y'all, Kim, for uh, taking on this debate when another brother bagged out. But I'm going to tell you, it's already starting off bad just through the intro. Because he just mentioned that we were scattered amongst the Gentiles and how to get out. Now, I want to know if his book can tell us uh, how we got scattered by the Gentiles. Does his book even have a prophecy to tell us 
that we are those people that came here. Does his prof does his book even say anything about us as a people and a prophecy? That alone is going to be a problem. But what I'm going to prove is I'm not going to get just on like genetic fallacies and things of that nature that everybody like to throw around. The truth of the matter is I'm going to prove that not only is this book by us, to us, and for us, meaning it tells us why we got in this condition, why we're still in this condition, and how we get out of this condition. Well, all he can do is hit land back off of the fact that they used our book. He already uh, mentioned that uh, he, he adheres to the prophets. Those prophets never came to Ishmael, and if he believed they did, they only came at a certain time. And then when the people talk about the book being tampered with, which we've heard thousands of times, that's a whole nother debate that I know he doesn't want to have. But a simple fact, if you even stretched it out, you would get 40 to 60 years from the times of the Gospels or when they had a contem contemporary historian like uh, Mark, Luke, Matthew and John. We could prove that Mark and John was around when Jesus was alive. and He was a real historical figure. On the other hand, if you look at Muhammad, you won't find it. That's where the Hadiths come in and uh, a lot of other people. That's not an argument he want, to, he want to make because that actually stretches out hundreds of years. So we got a problem with that. Um, I also like to say for everybody listening, uh, the main argument that I'm really going to make is I want to show the conditions that not only our people are in, but that this world is in. And the solution is in the same book that those Arabic and Ish Ishmaelic if you whatever term you want to use, if you want to go to, her, uh, uh, you know, um, I can't think of it right now, but I, I, I'm going to tell you, whoever you try to go to, if you want to use them as that source, you're going to find out they always went back to this book first. So if I'm going to the original, why do I have to go to anything new? And uh, the difference between what he just said and what I just said, I'm going to tell you when I open up. I'm going to show the conditions, the bad things that we're going through. I'm going to take you to the scriptures, show you the answer of it. I'm not showing you what religious people use. You see, it's a lot of, we know Christianity claims to have the Bible, but they don't follow the Bible. That's like me saying, well, all Muslims, this and that, but a lot of Muslims don't follow the Quran. So our argument is just following the Bible or the Quran exclude the religion what principles is going to help us and you'll find out without the principles in the Torah to knock in the Gospels the Quran actually has nothing to stand on so I, I'm going to be amazed to see how he even does this and one last thing before I say it before I finish I am so tired and a lot of y'all are too of hearing that well you know the Quran has not been tampered with if that's the case why every time you go in the Quran, they say, do you speak the Arabic? Well, we shouldn't have to speak the Arabic if it's not tampered. The transliteration and the translation should be decent. You know, that's like saying, well, you know, it's the same thing with the KJV. I can go in this, whether I speak a little Hebrew or not, and the message is still going to be clear. You know why? Because God had his hand in writing this. Well, unlike that, you can't find out who wrote it, let alone Muhammad, because we know he did. So with that, I can see my time. Let's get it in. Lion. All right, all right, all right. Um, Brother Mikhail, um, you spell your name with an H in it? Mikhail. Yeah, M-I-K-H-A, possibly, yeah. Hyphen you. M I K A H. M I K H A. Yeah. Also, oh, there's no A in there. Yes. M I K H A E L. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I wanted to spell your name right. Um, all right. So now we're going to get into. The premise round. We're going to set this timer for 10 minutes. And we're going to hand this thing over to Yakim the Submitter. Yakim the Submitter.
Whenever you're ready, brother, you can begin your premise round. Alhamdulillah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. So we're going to go ahead and share the screen. So we're going to just go ahead and refer to the Quran. Um, but before we do that, let's um, get a little understanding. of the term Quran. If we uh, go to the language of the Torah, we will see that the term Quran is represented. The root word, and this is the root word for uh, the proper noun or the title of the proclamation or the, the message that we call the Quran. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the, the term is kara. The definition is to call, call out, recite, read, cry out, proclaim, to summon, invite, to call for, call and commission, to appoint, to call and endow, to call, to give name to, to be called, to be proclaimed to be read aloud, to be summoned. This here is also connected to uh, an uh, another variation of the term uh, Quran 7122. And the definition of this use of the word Quran is to encounter or what you are going, what, what will encounter, what will befall you or what you will meet, your meeting something that is going to you are going to encounter um, to, uh, to meet unexpectedly to cause to meet so when you hear the term quran these are the uh, ideas that should be coming to your mind if you had idea uh, any idea of your language and the, its use in the torah so going to the quran Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Allah. I mean, in Surah 2, verse 97, say, anyone who opposes Gabriel should know that he has brought down this Quran into your heart in, a, in accordance with Allah's will, confirming previous scriptures and providing guidance and good news for the believers. In the next verse, anyone who opposes Allah and his angels and his messengers and Gabriel and Michael should know that Allah opposes the disbelievers. We have sent down you, we have sent down to you such clear revelations, and only the wicked will reject them. Is it not a fact that when they make a covenant and pledge to keep it, some of them always disregard it? In fact, most of them do not believe. In those series of verses, the them is, ref is specifically referring to the children of Israel because we were the one who were established the covenant and we fell in our uh, part and in, in our pledge in keeping it. And as you can see in um, verse 99, only the wicked will reject them. So if you are amongst those who reject the clear revelations of this Quran, you have now accompanied the, uh, the people who the author, the most high, the one who Gabriel is working for, the one who Michael is working for, he is referring to you as wicked. In Sirah verse, uh, Sirah uh, 4 verse 82, why do they not study the Quran carefully? If it were from other than Allah, they would have found in it numerous of contradictions. This here is a specific verse that me, um, Brother Mikhail referred to in his last uh, presentation. And in reading this verse, only the, uh, those who possess no fear of Allah and ignorance would attempt to locate contradictions. Because this is really a challenge, a statement telling you that, hey, why do you not study the Quran carefully? In all, in all actuality, it's telling you you should study this Quran carefully. And, and if it were from other than Allah, so it's telling you the source, 
In other words, it is from Allah. They would have found in it numerous of contradictions. So if you claim that there are numerous of contradictions and it's not from Allah, then you are contradicting the, the verses of the Quran, which it is stating that it is from Allah, the Lord of the universe. In Surah 6, verse 19, say, whose testimony is the greatest? Say, Allah's. He is the witness between me and you that this Quran has been inspired to me to preach it to you and to whomever it reaches. Indeed, you bear witness that there are other gods beside Allah. Say, I do not testify as you do. There is only one God and I disown your idolatry. We all heard the brother in this opening statement. In the name of his son, Jesus Christ. He's already borne witness that he cannot mention the name of, uh, he said Elohim or Allahim without mentioning another name. He has already borne witness that he is an idolater, that he must have, or that he believes that Allah alone or Yahweh Allah alone or the one God is not sufficient for him, that he must have something else. In Surah 6, verse 20, those to whom we have given the scripture recognize this as they recognize their own children. The ones who lose their souls are those who do not believe. So it's telling you the consequence for your disbelief. You will lose your souls. And it's also telling you that those who have received, received the previous scripture, that if they really studied their scripture, that they will recognize this scripture as if it was their own children. So by you rejecting the Quran, it proves that you do not know your scripture, that you do not know your history. And it goes on to say, who is more evil than one who lies about Allah or rejects his revelations? The transgressors never succeed. In Sirius 6, verse 51, and preach with this to those who reverence the summoning before their Lord, that they have none beside him as a Lord and master, nor an intercessor, that they may attain salvation. This leads to which, which is the best for our people. The Bible, look, most of those walking around with that Greek falsehood in the New Testament believes that there is an intercessor, believes that their intercessor dying for their, so, for their sins is their path toward salvation. But this here clears it up that you have none beside him as a Lord and master. And that is the one, the one true Lord, our God. In Surah 7, verse 204, when the Quran is recited, you shall listen to it and take heed that you may attain mercy. Very clear and straightforward, instructing you that when the Quran is recited, if you knew the Quran, you're, this is the call, the proclamation, when the proclamation has been recited, you should listen to it and take heed. Responding by saying, we, we hear and we obey. It goes on to say in Sirius 7, verse, uh, 7, verse 205, you shall remember your Lord within yourself publicly, privately, and, and quietly, day and night. Do not be unaware. Those at your Lord are never too proud to worship him. They glorify and prostrate before him. In Sirius 10, verse 37, this Quran could not possibly be authored by other than Allah. It confirms all previous messages and provides a fully detailed scripture. It is infallible, for it comes from the Lord of the universe. If they say he fabricated it, say then produce one surah like these and invite whomever, whomever you wish other than Allah if you are truthful. Indeed, they have rejected this without studying and examining it and before understanding it. <clears throat> Thus did those before them disbelieve. Therefore, note the consequences of the transgressors. Some of them believe in this scripture while others disbelieve in it. Your Lord is fully aware of the evildoers. If they reject you, then say, 
I have my works and you have your works. You are innocent of anything I do, and I am innocent of anything you do. Some of them listen to you, but can you make the deaf hear, even though they cannot understand? And with that, I will end and, and prepare um, for the next round. All praises and glory to Allah. All right, all right. Shout out to my man. But they got Kim the Submitter for dropping that science. We're going to now hand this thing over to. Brother Mikael, let me set this timer once again for uh, 10 minutes. And Brother Mikael, whenever you're ready, you can begin, brother. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Uh, I like to start straight off by saying um, I have to lay down my foundation like he laid down his. But I want everybody in the audience to notice something. I know y'all like, wait a minute. He's talking about a lesson I did. So he did not come into this debate for the topic, which is better for our society. He actually came into this debate listening to my lesson while I was showing the contradictions of the Quran. So he already got an L coming because he's not even debating the debate. And then the funny thing about the debate, I will say this. He got his PowerPoints up. That's cute. I can't really screen share. But this is what I do, man. And I'm being real humble with it. I thought this would have been a little bit harder, but he came through the door saying we were scattered amongst the Gentiles. If I ask that man, where does the Quran say that us, you are an Israelite and we're scattered amongst the Gentiles. Matter of fact, you're following Ishmaelite religion. So where does it say that the Ishmaelites under their cover covenant would be scattered beyond all the four corners of the earth and be the bottom and not the top? He's losing and what he just did, which wasn't even the debate topic. So let me get back to the debate topic and I'll beat up everything he just said later on when we get to the rapid round. And I hope by the time it come back to him, he tries to come back to the debate topic and see how this L going to go. OK, so Deuteronomy chapter 28. We all know it. We all heard it. Let me show everybody that's listening the stance that I have. The stance that I've had, whether you agree with it or not, is that we are the Israelites. Unlike him who admitted we're the Israelites without saying we're the Israelites, because he said we're scattered amongst the Gentiles, and he started talking about the prophets and the gospels and all of that type of stuff. Difference with him and me, I cut out the hand-me-down religion and go straight down to it. And it tells us in Deuteronomy 28, starting in the first verse, it says all the blessings that we will get if we keep his covenant. But if you skip down to the 15th verse, it say, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And now you got to ask him, our brother Yaakim, where does the Quran say this about the people that he's championing for? He's not going to find it. But what I'll do is I'm not going to spend all day in Deuteronomy 28 because y'all hear it all the time. So let's go to Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. You can see what a lot of people don't know is, and even for some of the other slick people I've seen on this channel, Deuteronomy 28 is not all talking about one time period. That's a retarded thing to say. It is a continuous thing. Once you are doing right, you're blessed. Once you're doing wrong, you're cursed. But the ultimate thing of the nation was we fell under the curses as a nation. You can go to Jeremiah chapter 29, verses like, two through five and it'll tell you what to do when you go into captivity but let me continue let's go to deuteronomy to see see he can't go to the quran and do this he just did a long exhortation so let's see what it says it says deuteronomy 7 when the lord thy god shall bring thee into the land whether thou goest to present no matter of fact wrong one let me go to uh deuteronomy 7 and 6 but thou art holy people unto the lord thy god the lord thy god have chosen thee to be a special people unto thyself Above all people that are upon the face of the earth, the Lord did not set his love upon thee, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, have the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of Baman, um, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Listen to this. 
Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth the covenant, which he brought up, but his covenant don't tell us about going into slavery and being under people, and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments for a thousand generations. Now watch this. A thousand generations is a long time. Who counts to see if we still under? The Quran don't have an answer for that. But I'll tell you what it does have uh tell you about. So, the that brother just did a long talk about a lesson I did. I wonder did y'all peep that? This man actually just came out not about the subject, but about a lesson that I did. So, what I want to do is let's look at the conditions that we in today. And let's see if the Bible has the answer opposed to if the Quran have the answer. So one thing, let's go look into their Quran. Let's go to the Quran. Let's go to uh, Surah 65. That's what we're going to do. I don't know what he came here to do. He came here to play. I don't know if he's trying to be an Islamic, uh, you know, like the preachers or whatever. But I ain't going to do all the ad hominems and stuff. Let's just do Surah 65. Let's go to verse 4. Because we know if a community is messed up, it starts with the father or the parents, the mother and the daddy, right? And what's connected to that? The children. If the children messed up, then they'll become bad parents. So let's go to Surah 65 and let's go to verse 4. And let's see what it says. And those of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses, for them, the Ida prescribed period if you have doubt about their periods is three months and for those who have no courses they are meaning did y'all hear that those that have no courses meaning the women that the girls that don't have periods yet meaning these are what you would call babies little bitty girls that's why muhammad got down like he did they are still immature their ida prescribed are still three months likewise, except for in case of death. Now, y'all go read this y'all self. He gonna tell me if it's a uh, English mistranslation, but this is in the 65th Surah in the fourth verse. What this is telling us is their outlook on what you would call uh, pedophilia is you could actually have a girl before her period start. Now let's look at the conditions in our community with all this pedophilia going on, right? Look, what, the pedophilia is off the chain. So what we gonna do is, because people have a lot of, uh, you know, misconstrued thoughts about, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, uh, you know, about the, the young girls or whatever it is, as, uh, as it concerns to the Torah or the Bible. So let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, and let's see what this says. See, we're doing a real comparison. I don't, I don't know what this brother came here to do. But let's go to 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. We can deal with the historical stuff later. I'm going to beat you up on that, too. But 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, let's pick it up in verse 3, see what it says. Let, uh, let the husband, I want y'all to hear this. Oh, my fault. I skipped to the wrong one. Let me bag up some. Let's go to Luke 17 and uh, 2. Let's go to that, Luke 17 and 2. Luke 17 and 2, because that's something I want to say for you. I got something else for that one. Oh, boy. This is about to get real interesting for y'all. Y'all know I love getting in this book, Joe. So Luke 17. Let's go here. Luke 17 and 2. Give me one second. Luke 17 and 2. Now, in the book that we just read, he gives out a whole decree, and you can read it in context, about wives and marriages. Then he gets to those girls who ain't even came on a menstrual yet, meaning they're young. So let's look at Luke, the 17th chapter, go to the second verse. It say, it were better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck and he's cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. If having sex with a little bitty one is not offense, I don't know what is. And we all understand that that's got a spiritual significance to it too, because we're all supposed to become little ones. But the thing to pay attention to is why he compares it to offending a little one. You know why? That is the concept that we understood. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. Same thing. 
I'm going to show you which one is clear about things that will help our society because our society is messed up, especially in a black neighborhood. So this first Corinthians seven and uh, 36, it said, but if any man think that he behave of himself uncomely towards his virgin, if she passed the flower of her age and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth if not, let him marry. Now, the reason I brought that up, because a lot of bring it up, oh, once they come on a period, but it says past the age of the flower. What does that mean? It also says in the Quran, past the age of that. But then it goes down later in that same verse and said, what if it's before the flower? So you can have a wife according to the Quran before she come on a period. But with the scriptures, it tell you, and I hate the retarded Israelites you got running out there. Y'all know who they are. Who, who waiting on the girl to come on a period. This says after the age. Do you know why I say that? Because the father ran the house. They would normally determine after the period what that age is that the girl is appropriate. So it don't have to be right after the girl bleeds. So let's continue going. So let's look at uh, uh, so over the first chapter. I want to show you something else that's crazy about this. So we're going to go to the fourth story. Watch this. We're going to go to the fourth story because this is our society. We got molestation. We got the. All right. All right. Shout out to Mikael for dropping his science. We're going to go right into the rebuttal. It's time to rebut family. Um, so, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the timer once again for 10 minutes and I'll hand this thing over to Yakim the submitter. And Yakim the submitter, whenever you're ready, you can begin, brother. I'm doing a lot. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. So we're, we're going to go ahead again. And, you know, the Quran is going to address a lot of his uh, mistakes. But before I, I go on that, just uh, just want to make clear that the debate is uh, which is better for uh, our community, the Bible or the Quran. Uh, he has yet to um, really even talk about the Bible or to show any type of uh, reason why um, combination of uh, a text that is written in our language and uh, a combination of, and, and, and combining something that's written in the language of those who enslaved us being the Greek language combining those two separate sources and, and making it into a Bible and how that is beneficial to us especially uh, since um, we are in captivity uh, but let's go ahead and just go to the Quran because it's going to address a lot of his uh, challenges and a lot of his misunderstanding. Uh, so in Surah 4, verse 31, if you refrain from committing the gross sins that is prohibited for you, we will remit your sins and admit you in honorable admittance. So uh, the Quran is telling you and giving you an understanding that uh, you can remit your sins, have your sins forgiven, and you will be given and uh, or be uh, receive uh, an honorable admittance, uh, and that admittance is into uh, the kingdom. Uh, in Surah 5, verse 12, Allah has uh, had taken a covenant from the children of Israel, and we raised among them 12 patriarchs, patriarchs. And Allah said, I am with you, so long as you observe the contact prayers, salat, give the obligatory charity, zakat, and believe in my messengers and respect them and continue to lend Allah a loan of righteousness. I will then remit your sins and admit you into gardens with flowing streams. Anyone who disbelieves after this has indeed strayed, um, has indeed strayed off the right path. So the Quran here, again, this is confirming, the, I mean, he was challenging and saying that the Quran does not uh, speak to the children of Israel or uh, refer to his history. <laughs> the Quran, there's a chapter, there's a whole series called the children of Israel. You know, I, I mean, to say that the Quran does not uh, have anything for the children of Israel means you have not read or studied it. Um, but as you can see there, we had the covenant and um, you had to do some things. 
you had to observe Salat. And that's the way he elevates us. You had to give obligatory charity, zakat. That's how he purifies us. And believe in my messengers and respect, and respect them. Well, we know we did not do that. We did not believe in his messengers and respect him. The way that uh, Mikael is speaking to, uh, speaking about the messenger of Allah, the, the, the one that, who was uh, ordained to deliver the Quran, the way he speaks to uh, him shows no respect. So it's in his blood. He's failing his part of the covenant. So he's not lent in, you, the Quran uh, encourages you to lend Allah a loan of righteousness. It gives you what to do to be considered striving to be amongst those who are righteous. What did, and what does that bring for you? I will then remit your sins, I will forgive you your sins, and admit you into gardens with flowing streams. This should be the purpose of your life. Anyone who disbelieves after this has indeed strayed off the right path. This is you, Mikael, and all those who disbelieve. Sir, uh, we're going to go ahead and continue the next verse. It, it was a consequence of their violating the covenant that we condemned them. So we're condemned. And we caused their hearts to become hardened. Your heart is hardened. Consequently, they took the words out of context. That's what you're doing. And disregarded some of the covenants given to them. You will continue to witness betrayal among, from them, ex excepting a few of them. Oh, we all know that's a trait amongst the children of Israel. The betrayal. You shall pardon them and disregard them. Allah loves those who are benevolent. Also from those who said we are Nasrani or Nazarites or Nazarene, we took their covenant. This is specifically talking to a community of the children of Israel, but they disregarded some of the commandments given to them. Consequently, we condemned them to animosity and hatred among themselves until the day of resurrection. Allah would then inform them of everything they had done. Oh, we all know who, who that's talking about, that hatred and animosity, the so-called black-on-black crime. I'm pretty sure everyone saw a video of black-on-black of, of, of -black crime today or within the last 48 hours. Well, that's, our, that's the fulfillment of our curse. We've been condemned to that. So that's a, that's a trait. That's a trait of who he's talking to. Uh, you don't see that amongst the other communities. Of the people of the of this scripture, that's us, our messenger has come to you to proclaim for you many things you have concealed in the scripture and to pardon many other transgressions you have committed. A beacon has come to you from Allah and a profound scripture. With it, Allah guides those who seek his approval. He guides them to the paths of peace, leads them out of darkness into the light by his lead and guides them in a straight path. Again, this is referring to the Quran. This is your benefit for following the Quran. In Surah 5, verse 64, that Yahudi, this is you, the nation of Yahuda, even said, Allah's hand is tied down. That's why you don't think Allah is, uh, is going to deliver a message. That he ain't, he's not going to do anything. Yeah, that's what you guys believe. Allah's hand is tied down. It is their hands that are tied down. They are condemned for uttering such a blasphemy. Instead, his hands are wide open, spending uh, uh, as he wills for certain your Lord's revelations to you will cause many of them, the Church of Israel, to plunge deeper into transgression and disbelief. Consequently, we have committed them to animosity and hatred among themselves until the day of resurrection. Whenever they ignite the flames of war, Allah puts them out. We're weak. We have no power. We have no ability to, to, to uh, fight and, and, and to uh, uh, declare war. They roam the earth wickedly, and Allah dislikes the evildoers. If only the people of the scripture believe and led a righteous life, we will then remit their sins and, and admit them into gardens of bliss. Again, this is your invitation, O people of the scripture, to believe and lead a righteous life. And what's going to happen? He will remit your sins. He will forgive you and admit you into the gardens of bliss. 
if only they would uphold the Torah and the Nagal. That's the message that the Messiah, son of Mary, spoke. And what is sent down to them herein from their Lord. That's the Quran. They would be showered with blessings from above them and from beneath their feet. Some of them are righteous, but many of them are evildoers. Again, that's speaking to the children of Israel. Many of them are evildoers. So I don't expect the, the majority of you to, to even be those amongst those who strive to uh, believe and be righteous. Remind them of the uh, Sirius 7 verse 163. Remind them of the community by the sea who desecrated the Sabbath. When they observed the Sabbath, the fish came to them abundantly. And when they violated the Sabbath, the fish did not come. We thus afflicted them as a consequence of their transgression. Recall that a group of them said, why should you preach to people whom Allah will surely annihilate or punish severely? They answered, apologize to your Lord that they might be saved. When they disregarded what they were reminded of, we saved those who prohibited evil and afflicted the wrongdoers with a terrible uh, retribution for the wickedness. This is, the, this is referring to Church of Israel again. When they continued to defy the commandments, we said to them, be you despicable apes. So we're, we're dropped down to the level of animals, of apes. Additionally, your Lord has decreed that he will raise up against you, against them, and raise up, raise up against them people who will inflict severe persecution upon them until the day of resurrection. This is your curses that you're living through. Your Lord is most efficient in, in enforcing retribution, and he is certainly the forgiver, most merciful. We scattered them among many communities throughout the land. Some of them were righteous and some were less than righteous. We tested them with prosperity and hardship that they may return. This is your goal. This is the, the discipline or, or uh, that has been inflicted upon us that which we should be grateful for that is causing us to return back to him. We, the main goal of all of this is for us to return back to him. And in disbelieving in his, in his uh, scriptures, disbelieving in his prophets and messengers, disbelieving in the one the message that came in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, demonstrates that you have a total lack of uh, knowledge of who Allah is, uh, and you do not have a sufficient fear of him, um, uh, and that will lead you to a um, uh, point of disbelief. <laughs> All right, all right. Shout out to y'all, Kim, the submitter, for dropping that science. We're going to now get into the second half of the rebuttal. Y'all, Kim, the submitter, dropped his science. Now it's time for Brother Mikhail to go in. So we'll set this timer for 10 minutes. And whenever you're ready, Brother Mikhail, you can begin. I'm roaring like a lion already, baby. Let me kick it straight off. So first off, you know, just to address something that he keeps bringing up, he keeps bringing up the fact, and I see people in the comments, which I normally don't watch that when I debate, but something told me to watch it. He keeps bringing up the fact that he acknowledges we are the children of the covenant. He's not saying it as far as us being Ishmaelites, but us being Israelites, because he spoke of us being scattered. Um, what's weird about that is he's reading it from an Islamic or Ishmaelic religion. Whether you go to Ishmael or the Hagarines or whatever you want to get into the history, we know that it's not dealing with Isaac at all. So let's see what the God, the same God that the Quran say that they honor, that they say the Israelites messed up with. Let's see what he says about the father of this, which we know Islam actually derives from Ish Ishmael. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to Genesis, the 16th chapter, and look at what it says about our beloved father of what you're trying to put against the Ishmael. This is uh, uh, Genesis chapter 16, verse 12. It says, concerning Ishmael, I'll start at 11. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brother. Now watch this. The fact that he's a wild man shows you why what I brought up earlier, why this book is wild as hell. <laughs> and let's just confirm who the covenant with. Let's go straight over to the 17th chapter and let's look at this. Genesis 17, and let's pick it up at the 19th verse. This is what it says. 
And God said to Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I would establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him a fruitful and, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begot and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee as I set the time to next year. Now, nothing is, we're not taking nothing against Ishmael, Arabs, anything of that nation. We know about the name mix and all that. We're going to get into those little semantics. But if you look, you got the United Arab Emirates, which is set up as 12 states at one time, sometime 11. Those are the princes that were spoken of in these scriptures. Now, I did that just to get that out the way so he could stop looking, you know, um, inconsistent by basically acknowledging he's an Israelite, but keep running back to Ishmael. So he's really already losing through the door because it's not about beliefs. It's about who information makes more sense. So let me get back to the debate. Which one is better for our society? The principles in the Bible or the principles in the Quran, which he says the Quran got from the Bible, but the Bible somewhere messed up. But the Quran messed it up a little bit later. So let's go back to it. So let's go to the Quran, Surah, the fourth chapter. Now, I started with pedophilia. And we already saw how the Quran looked about that. So we want to go back to Surah, the fourth chapter. Listen to this, y'all. This, this, this. Y'all remember when I did my presentation? I told y'all I had way more than that now. Surah, the fourth chapter. And let's go back to about the, let me see, 24th verse. Surah, let's go to the 24th verse. Now listen to this. This is something we need to pay attention to now. Because adultery is a bad thing in our community. A lot of people don't want to marry people, but cats that are married like to sleep with people wives, right? And we got STDs running around. Let's look at how this goes. Surah 4 and 24. This is what it says. Also, forbidden are women already married, except those. Now, listen, if you read in context, because I even do that with the Quran, if you read up, it's talking about women that you can lay with, wives and divorcees. So look at what it says. Also forbidden are women already married, except those slaves whom your right hand possess. Thus have Allah ordained for you. And it says all others are lawful. Now, it's telling you that you can't commit adultery but if she's a slave, like if you go to our book in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, it talks about prisoners of war. They had a mourning process, a cleansing process, had to shave their hair, shave their nails and all that type of stuff. And if you went in and it wasn't right, y'all didn't agree, it said you can let her go. But in this, you can commit adultery if she's a slave. Now, that's crazy. So this shows why it's not a problem to even play with a little girl, according to their same surahs. But let's stay in surah the fourth chapter, because we got another problem. And I'm going to pull this, if I could screenshot, I would, but I'll just read them. But I'm going to pull up some of the statistics that we got going on in our community, because the debate is which one is better for our society. So let's stay in surah the fourth chapter, and let's just scoot on over to the 34 verse. Let's listen to this, y'all. If, if that wasn't crazy enough, do y'all know what one of the biggest things in our community is? Matter of fact, let me pull this up real quick. I know we ain't got too much time, but I got to read this. Uh, here we go. Alarming. This is called uh, Social Solutions, y'all. Y'all go to the website. It's called Social Solutions. It's called 20 Alarming Domestic Vital Statistics for 2018. It says more than one in three women, that's 35.6%, and more than one in four men, 28.5% in the United States, report having experienced rape, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime. Now, the 20% per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner in the United States during one year. This adds up to more than 10 million women and men. Let's see what the Quran... Oh, boy, this is about to get ugly. Some of y'all about to drop y'all Quran flag. Let's see what the Quran answer is for that as opposed to the Bible. So 
this is uh the fourth surah and the 34th verse men are the protectors and maintainers of women because allah has made one of them to excel the other and because they spend support them from their means therefore the righteous women are devoutly obedient to allah and to their husbands and guard in the husband's absence what allah orders them to guard their chastity in their husband's property that's what he got quotations as to those women on whose part you see i'll conduct admonish them first refuse to share their bed now listen to this this is what it's saying as to those women on whose part you see ill conduct meaning if your woman acting wrong admonish them first next refuse to share their beds so it's telling you man joe if your woman acting wrong don't sleep with her don't give her no loving right it's saying last beat them listen y'all this is in the fourth surah and the 34th verse i got to say it again so y'all don't think i'm making it up it says if your woman acting wrong because you are the head like our bible say you the head it say that a week of sex it say all that but let me show you what i say it says refuse to share their beds meaning don't give them none of that loving because she ain't acting right now if if if, if, if restraining the uh lovey maker from her don't work it literally says beat them lightly if it is useful so it's saying if you beat her, just give her a couple of jabs, you know, just a couple of kicks. Don't like throw her out a window if that works. It says, but if they obey you, seek not against their means. Surely Allah is ever most high gracious. Now let's see what the Bible says because remember, let's remember, domestic violence is a problem in our community. So let's look at what our Bible says, right? And you know what's funny about that? I'm going to tell you what that sounds like in the Quran. I'm going to tell you what it's talking about when they talk about how oppressive the Bible is. This is what it sounds like. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs, uh, the 23rd chapter. Proverbs 23. This is what the Quran just sounded like. This is talking about your full grown wife, right? But it sounds like this. Proverbs 23 and 13. It says, withhold not correction from the child for if thou beatest him with the rod he shall not die so the quran looks at your woman the exact same way we look at our child so meaning you could put a belt to them you can kick their tail if they're not acting right but let's see what our gospels or our new testament says that they say they're better at let's go to first corinthians the seventh chapter now let's see what it say right it's all the way crazy because our Bible actually tell you don't withhold the love. Oh man, you can't cut me like that. Alright, alright, alright. Shout out to both the beta very informative debate. We're gonna get now right into the rebuttal round. Let me set this timer for 15 minutes. And uh since brother um Yakim Mr. Miller went first, we're gonna allow Brother Mikael to ask the first question. Brother Yakim, whenever you're ready, you can begin. Can you say it again? So I asked the first question. Uh, I mean, Brother Mikhail. Brother Mikhail, yeah. ask the first question. <clears throat> oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. I just heard you. All right. So, man, you know, I man, I ain't even finished. You cutting. With my verses, I was finna just finish dicing that Quran up, but uh, uh, okay, yeah, question. Um, well, being that the subject is not the history of the Bible, not the history of the Quran, but which one, uh, based on their principles, will be better for our society? So, I gotta ask you, bro, are there any prophecies in the Quran concerning us, meaning the Negro, because you already talking like you know we Israelite. is there any prophecies concerning us as far as how we get into slavery and how we can get out 
but uh, that was that was already read to you as far as our some of the prophecies uh, that was foretold as far as our uh, explaining our current condition, our hatred and animosity uh, towards uh, each other, uh, us being scattered and persecuted uh, amongst the uh, the communities, the many nations. Uh, that's uh, told. That's explained to us in the Quran, uh, and also can you show uh, us where? That's what I'm asking. Show but, us the Quran. I already did that. Um, well, you can go back and get it if you if you did it because I don't think nobody heard it. We in a, we in a, um they in the chat saying they ain't see it either. So <clears throat> not going anywhere for a while. Grab a Quran. <laughs> right. Uh, as you can see right here in Sirius seven verse one sixty eight. Uh, we uh, we scattered them amongst. Them. Hold up, you said you say Surah seven verse 68. one sixty eight. Surah seven one sixty. Or, or you can even go before that. Seven, uh, uh, Surah seven verse one sixty seven. Additionally, your Lord has decreed that He will raise up against them people who will inflict severe persecution upon them until the day of resurrection. So it's already letting you know that. This, uh, the, the, you, we will experience this until the end, until the day of resurrection. Your Lord is most efficient in enforcing retribution. So this is what's going on. He is enforcing retribution for our wicked ways when we were a nation, for our acts of rejecting his messengers, his prophets, even to the point of killing them. And just know this, before we killed them, we spoke as you speak about the prophet. I mean, everyone speaks in all the comments that's probably written in there. I mean, on the chat line, uh, that's that's how they spoke before they killed them. So the church, that's and, the, and remember, this is the church of Israel. Uh, um, uh, and, okay, and then it goes on to say uh, we scattered them amongst. Who do you think that them is? It is the church of Israel, and we scattered them amongst the many uh, communities uh, throughout their land. Uh, uh, throughout the, the land. Some of them are righteous. Uh, and it, this is a test. We tested them with prosperity and har hardship that they may return. So you, you, know, you, we should be focusing on returning to him, but you return to him by recognizing his words and believing in his words by saying we hear and we obey. But when you disbelieve, you, you, you're not returning. You're just doing what but what, what was done to lead you in this current situation? You're just repeating the same mistakes uh, of, of our ancestors. And he goes in on to even say, in Surah 171, we raised the mountain above them like an umbrella. Who do you think this is referring to? And they thought it was going to fall on them. You shall uphold what we have given you strongly and remember the contents thereof that you may be saved so the quran is your pathway towards salvation um okay bro um i don't so, know i don't know if you really understood my question because the surah that you just recited is actually talking about what was said in the Torah concerning the Israelites and not a prophecy of the Quran. All you got to do is read the next server, bro. It says, and we have broken them, i.e. the Jews, Israelites. Uh, and so he's telling them about what the Israelites did. It said in various separate groups on earth, some of them are righteous and some away from that. And we tried them with good blessings and evil calamities in order that they might turn. Now, let me tell you, what it says the solution is and it says to Allah's obedience that after them succeeded the evil generation which inherited the book what book is he talking about not the let's listen but they chose for themselves the good of this low life evil pleasures of this world saying as an excuse everything will be forgiven to us and if again the offer is like us evil pleasures in this world came their way they would again seize them will commit those sins. Was not the covenant of the book taken from them that they would not say about Allah anything but the truth? And they have studied what it is, what is in the book and the home of hereafter 
it's better for those who are do uh are all mine to it with portions you can say that do you not then understand so what's crazy next verse it says and as to those who hold fast to the book i.e his teachings it says the torah so it literally tells you to go back to the torah and it's talk about the israelites my question was does the quran it's referring back to our book and then it tells you to go back to the torah so you know that was that was really like a bad move okay right? So, so what what are you saying? I mean, the Quran uh, tells you that uh, the Torah what, that it confirms the Torah. Uh, so, uh, but if you're saying the Torah, uh, uh, but the Quran, I mean, you got to understand what the purpose of the Quran is. It is uh, the confirmation of your scripture. Again, uh, it is something that if you knew your scripture while in captivity, this is your test uh, to believe or disbelieve, and it is also. Uh, a, a message for all of mankind, uh, which is you, me, amongst the children of, uh, of uh, Israel, and the Gentiles. See, this is the, uh, the, the Quran is the only message for the Gentiles. Uh, you, with your Bible and all your, uh, that you got it from, your Gentile, because you received your Bible from the Gentile. The Gentiles created the New Testament, combined it with uh, our scripture, and gave and and, uh, and created something known as the mm. Bible uh, for a, uh, a a path toward salvation. So you're walking around with uh, something that they created through hearsay um, uh, uh, that is falsehood that 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 has your truth and their falsehood, and uh, you think it is the best source uh, toward salvation, and even though you I mean, uh, but the Quran uh, is uh, a confirmation of the truth. And it exposes the falsehood. Uh, so what the Quran does, it upholds the Torah and uh, totally eliminates and discredits all the false writings and narrations uh, of, of those who writ wrote down the, the letters uh, that you guys now call the New Testament. But now, can I ask you a question? Um, yeah. what verse, can you give me one verse, mm -hmm. one scripture that you can use to anyone to uh that contains the term bible and uh, implies or teaches them that by following the bible um, it is the best for them is the term bible in in the in anywhere in your book um no of course that would be retarded because the word bible comes from the word biblos which means binding of books but i can show you in revelations where it talks about okay did, okay. It talks so, about the book. Okay. Did, uh, is there a, a you can show me a verse? I'll show that, you the book. Show me, show me any in any of the writings where any of those writers of the Greek letters of the New Testament knew that it was going to be uh, that that their writings were going to be bound in a book, and that it was going to be combined with the Torah, and that it was going to be called the Bible. Where is the proof or the explanation of your Bible? And if you cannot show me that, then because I've already shown you Quran, the definition of the Quran of Quran, its root word using uh, the Torah. You, we should know what Quran means when, when I when you say that word uh, using scripture. I'm asking for your definition, of your explanation using scripture. No, what you're doing is you're stuck. That's what that's called. You're stuck. Because, no. but you, and, and, and just mute it. Don't, don't get in your feelings. But we all see what you just did. You went into a thing about the Quran when the debate is which one is better for our society. Now you're asking me to show you in the Greek something about the word Bible. Well, I'll show you in that same Bible where it speaks of books because the word Biblos is a Latin word which means binding of books. So you cut yourself because you actually said Bible. Like the Bible is going to literally say Bible when it didn't become a Bible until they put the books together. Mm. So who's they? Well, who's they? And under who authority, uh, bro? Did they did they put they put these books together? Could you let me finish? Who's yeah, they? I'm, because we were destroyed as a nation. You're asking the question. So now you're asking the question on top of a question. Do you want me to? Like, are you you okay? Can you can you maintain yourself? 
Okay, so look, right. I know, I know Islam teaches discipline, brother. Just get a hold of yourself. So, okay, um, and what you did was what's extremely funny is you brought up the Quran and you just asked me to bring up the Bible, like I said, a Latin word, which means buying the books. When your book, you went to a surah that literally said, go back to the Torah. So your book spoke about our book, but now you want to tell me to go in my book and find a modern day word for our book. So the Torah, well, the Torah does not lead you to say in the name of Jesus Christ. The Torah does not lead you to say in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. So you are obviously following something um, that you have combined with the Torah that leads you to when you speak of um, the Lord our God, you must speak of in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. It is my claim that that those writings that led you to that uh, idolatry uh, is the falsehood that should not be combined with the truth of our Torah. You know, uh, this, 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 this is a slap in the face. This is a slap in the face. Y'all see why some people but, are but, you know, you're, da you're dancing and you're not even answering the question. Won't you Bro, I'm trying to I can't do it. Just say I can't do it. Just say hey, I cannot uh, have, do it. I got the verse in my hand ready to okay, read it. You could have did it five minutes ago. Let's go. You're dancing. Revelation is the 20th chapter and verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books, Biblos, binding the books, were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. So you had books, and then you got the book of life. The book of life is the one that the Most High got recorded, and then you got books. What do you think those books is? I can show you. And it's the same books, which is the word of God, that we will be judged by, which is the Bible. And the dead which were judged out of those things. What? The binding of books, the Bible, which were written in the books according to their works. You dead, killed yourself, cut yourself, blew your head off. Now, my turn to answer the question. You did all that for nothing. So, now, my question is, uh, let me see. Let me ask you a question, brother. Uh, do, you, uh, do you adhere to the Hadith? It's the Quran. And it's a bag of questions. It's a double question. Like you gave me like a three question, but I'm just going to give you a two. And, uh, no, I do not. I only follow the Torah and the Quran. Uh, the Hadith is, is, is a false narration that's written by man. Uh, and, and that's the equivalent of what your so called New Testament is. It is a testimony written by man that contains. I didn't, I didn't ask you that, brother. That, uh, I didn't, I didn't. So, but uh, so no, so I, I don't believe in any. I don't believe in any testimony. Okay, that's all you had to say. Uh, but that's not okay. coming in the name okay. of. This is the. Re this, I, I figured you was going to say that. That's why I said it's a two part question. So, you said you don't believe in the hadiths. Now, everybody, all the audience listening to this, he only follows the Quran and Torah. So let me ask you, brother, how many times do you pray a day? Pray five times a day. Where is the five times a day in the Quran? That's uh, the debate, bro. Uh, we uh, we can go ahead and, and to me right uh, now, but that's not the debate. Uh, Talk to me right now. Debate. He just that's, killed. That's, the that's, the that's, not, that's not the debate. But, uh, we can we can easily do that, but uh, I see what, brother, that's not the debate. Five times a day in the Quran right now. Um, that's not the debate. But once, no, if, you, if you want to do that, if you want to go in there, that could easily bro. be done. But, that uh, all, look, look, bro. We're going on uh, the topic of the debate. This stuff, but you don't know your book better than so, I do. So I don't care if you were to do What you want me to do is uh, uh, the problem uh, stop the debate. Is you keep you killing yourself, you brother. Yeah. The subject is which one is better for our society? Okay. So let's so, the Quran. Let's, you let's focus on that. So again, can you show the uh, can you, about the Bible? Can you show any, any you don't know of, your of, own of the Bible? Quran. Man, look, we're not. It's not that I don't know. It's just that it's not the time to teach it. Are we gonna? Are you gonna? You want this? Is, is that what you don't want to answer or go back forth any questions? Bro, you want to? You want to be taught and shown is, all the five uh, a lot in the prayer. You know, you want to show. You want to show. You want to show. I mean. Let's even go to the Torah and, and, and find the definition of something. Oh, that's not the question. Yeah. The question's not. Let's, let's, let's do that. Remember the truth. And then, now, that, that, now that you know this to be the truth, does your New Testament teach a lot? 
Does it, does it take the top? Yes, it does. All right, all right, all right. Shout out to both the beaters. We're going to now um, close this thing out. We're going to set the timer for five minutes. Got Kim, the submitter, is on you, brother. Let us get your closing. All right, well, we'll go ahead and continue uh, close this up real quick. Well, as you can see, just through that uh, round alone, he, he could not answer any questions. Uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, 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 go ahead and mute it, if you can mute. My man. Um, he did not answer any questions as far as uh, being able to demonstrate or show uh, the concept of the Bible or uh, the benefit or of following uh, the Bible. Uh, through the scriptures used uh, this evening, uh, I was able to define and describe the Quran. Uh, I, I, uh, vert, I read verses that clearly demonstrated that the Quran is the best path towards salvation, um, that, it, that the Quran is fully detailed, uh, and that uh, those who disbelieve in the Quran, there is a consequence. And for those who believe in the Quran, uh, there's a reward. Um, uh, I've demonstrated that um, as we are all guilty of sin, the Quran offers a path towards the remittance or the forgiveness of sins uh, and uh, the admittance into the gardens and uh, the kingdom with the flowing streams. Um, this uh, should be, again, your purpose, objective in life. The Quran is the call uh, to duty, the call to believe, uh, and the call, uh, and the proclamation uh, that we should recognize because we, uh, more than any other nation, have been called by our Lord. But it is through our disobedience and lack of uh, uh, fear of Allah that we have rejected and disobeyed and ignored his call. Uh, so I encourage those to heed his call, hit, uh, listen to his call, and obey his call. And uh, again, he has already promised us peace, shalom, uh, and, and the, the act of making amends uh, and forgiveness of our sins. Even if we go to the Torah uh, and, and study the term shalom, it, it is the uh, act of making amends. It is the covenant in which you establish, in which you make amends for your sins uh, and your transgressions. Uh, and, and that the amends is the remittance of your sins. And, and even shalom or Islam is... Uh, connected with your recompense. That is going to be your payment of what you're going to earn on the day of judgment. Uh, again, uh, so if we use the Torah and the Quran, uh, which is the best path while we're in captivity, uh, we will um, be amongst those who are the leaders amongst the nations uh, because we have both the Torah and the Quran. Uh, and again, I believe that the Gentiles should not have anything except the the, the Quran, and if the Gentiles are walking around with the Bible, with uh, the Torah and their New Testament, they are in possession of stolen property. Uh, and if you're walking around with their the same thing that they're walking around, you are following in the footsteps of your enemy. You are uh, walking around with their creation, their uh, tool that they're using, and 100% uh, of the time, you're going to be off uh, the straight path, just like them. Because they are not meant to, to, to read and possess our scripture and find a path towards truth. So if they're walking you know, with your Bible you know, that, they're get, that they've given you, they've created that, uh, and it is off. Uh, so uh, I strongly encourage you to go back to your scripture, uh, burn the Greek New Testament, uh, uh, and then uh, the, the, the Torah will lead you to the Quran uh, and it will set you straight. Uh, and guide you to the straight path and following both the Torah and the Quran. Uh, and with that, I will yield the rest of my time. All praises and glory to, to Allah. Um, Allah. All right. All right. Shout out to Y'all come to submit it for dropping that knowledge. We're going to now hand this thing over to Brother Mikael. Mikael, you have five minutes to close. Brother, whenever you're ready. Yeah. Can you hear me out? Yes, sir. Yeah, I just like to say to everybody, man, you know, thanks for checking out the debate. You know, we ain't got too much time, but uh, 
uh, yeah, I don't really know what that was, you know, but no disrespect to the brother. You know, I, I enjoyed it, bro. I get a little bit passionate. But like I was saying, when the whole subject of this debate, I want to make it clear. Everybody listening, whether you agree with the Bible or the Quran, I want to make sure that I made the case that comparing the Bible to the Quran, I brought out what the Bible says and what the Quran says. And it was funny because when I brought up that uh, surah, the fourth chapter about, you know, you can sleep with a slave woman. And then I went straight to that from what I brought up about dealing with children. And then you go into surah, the fourth chapter in the 34th verse. It talks about how you can beat your woman. And then I showed in contrast, first Corinthians seven, how we're supposed to treat our wife with respect and good. And Ephesians five and twenty nine say you don't beat her, but you cherish her. And then what's really funny is when it gets pedophilic is if you bring up some and shout out to my beloved brother, Bigham, you know, server the 76 chapter 19 verse. It says there will circulate among them young boys made eternal. When you see them, you would think them as beautiful as scattered pearls. Now, I ain't going to get too deep off of that, but it sounds real strange if you ask me. So. Had this debate been a little longer, which we know we can't do, we spoke about that, I have a plethora of information uh, going out um, as far as the Quran is concerned. And when it comes to the Torah of the Bible, as y'all seen, whatever question he asked me, I did not dodge it. I went to the Bible, even when he tried to pull a trick question about a word Bible that wouldn't exist in the book in the New Testament when they only had the Old Testament and later would become the Bible. But what made it cold was Revelations is a future prophecy. And what does it tell you in there? It talks about the Bible, meaning the binding of books. And it says you will be judged by them books. Guess what? It's the same books that the Quran talks about. But you know what's funny? The Quran, when it comes to speaking about the Quran, doesn't even know what the Quran wants to do. So with that, that's our argument. And in the end of the day, I don't see any possible way, whether you like me or not, that I would lose on a scholastic level just as far as the information that we brought. And I have a lot more I could have brought. But, uh, you know, this is a late night debate. I ain't got too long. But with that, I say thank all y'all for y'all support. Shalom, shalom, grace and peace. And, you know what I'm saying? All praises to the most high. All right. Shout out to both debaters. We're going to get right into this thing. Um, and we did pretty good, you know, because I, I believe it'd be some debates <laughs> that started at 9 o'clock that be rocking out past this time. So we, we, we did pretty good with the time. Um, so with that being said, let's um, now get into the judges round. Um, we're going to start out with uh, Brother uh, Mikael. Um, Brother Mikael, what's good? It's good, Ock. What's, what's up with you? All right. Um, hold on one second. Uh, brother stated that the Israelites, um, they broke the covenant. Mm -hmm. Was that a true statement? He made reference from the Quran from um, uh, Surah 5, verse 12. That the uh, covenant for the children of Israel was broken because they went into idolatry. Right. I mean, yeah, most definitely. That's 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 been our whole thing ever since a recovery mission. So I think I guess his argument is predicated around, um, you know, uh, the covenant was taken away from them because of that. Okay. Well, uh, that would be a void argument because if you heard earlier, I wrote, I read out of their own book that they were still telling them to refer back to the Torah. So if the, uh, if the, uh, what you would call early Muslim writers felt that they were irrelevant, why would they still go back to the ones who broke the covenant? So they had an understanding better than us. That kind of kills that whole argument. So don't take away. So I'm answering you clearly. 
It does not take away from us breaking it. But at the same time, it does not take away from the authority still being with us because according to the Quran, it says that the Torah is still the answer. So there you go. Next question. Well, the, the people actually are the ones that broke the covenant, not the prophets. The prophets is the one that actually right. broke the Torah. I agree with that. So uh, I, I, I'm assuming that um, what he what, what is being suggested there is that the, the children of Israel broke the covenant. And as what the verse that he uh, pointed out stated, you know, that they did not follow the messengers. So what do you have to say about that? Um, well, our own Bible tell us that Israel started, uh, stopped following the messenger. That's like, there's nothing, that's not an argument with me. The whole question is, did we lose it? And according to the scriptures, we never lost it. And even according to the Quran, they're still referring back to it. That's my point. So yeah, it's like, uh, a, that, that's what I was saying. Like they're referring back to it because there was nothing to matter with the message. It, it, what, what the problem was, was that the people didn't follow the message. Right. Yeah. But we know that people didn't follow the message. That's why we wound up going into captivity. Uh, here's the point. Here's the point. Uh, here we go. Deuteronomy. Uh, here we go. The 30th chapter. It's an answer for you. The same book that they refer back to. Because remember, even the Quran acknowledges that these are prophecies in this book, meaning all of them have not come to pass. Um, so Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Everybody reads 28, but they never go past it. 30. It says, and it shall come to pass. When all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse, but which ones you under, it said, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind, among all the nations, meaning at this point, you're scattered, whether the Lord thy God have driven thee, right? So we know this ain't just talking about during the time of Joshua and all that type of stuff. Look, it says, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and we still in captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. It says, if any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will thy fetch thee, and the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply, multiply thee above thy fathers. So this lets you know that he's still going to put us right back on top and right in the spot. And this is well after the Quran which they don't even know when it was written in the 8th century, 7th century, or the 9th century. So, that's that answer. All right, and um, Al-Araf, that's chapter 7 of the Quran, verse 66 to 68, it says, um, and when they ins ins silently rebelled against that which they had been forbidden, we said unto them, be ye apes despised. And remember the time when the Lord commanded that he would truly raise against them to the day of resurrection those who would afflict them with a grievous torment. Surely thy Lord is quick in retribution and surely he is also most forgiving merciful. It says, and we broke them up into separate peoples in the earth. Among them are those that, righteous, that are righteous and among them are those that are otherwise and we tried them with good things and bad things that they might return then there has come an evil generation after them who inherit the book they take the paltry goods of this low world and say 
it will be forgiven us. But if there came to them similar goods again, they would take them. Was not the covenant of the book taken from them that they would not say of Allah anything but the truth? And they have studied what is therein. And the abode of the hereafter is better for those who are righteous. Will you not then understand? And uh, so, is this not um, a prophecy? Um, was this not a prophecy? Uh, that don't sound like a prophecy about. Uh, I think I guess what he was saying. A part of the prophecy says, "And we broke them up into separate peoples in the earth." Okay. Did I, that and you know what he says, if that's the case, it says he broke them up. So it's not even speaking about. The people that which would be Ishmaelites in the Bible. He's talking about a separate people, which means he would be talking about us. Do you get my about, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, that's that's a prophecy making reference to the children of Israel. So that would be coming from where? The Bible. Where does the Quran have its own pro do you see what I'm saying? Where does the Quran have its own if that's our book, let's let's just keep it clear. If that is our book. That's our book, meaning that book is for us. If we know we're an Israelite, like that brother Yakim admits he's an Israelite. So if that book is an Israelite book and not an Ishmael book, it's speaking as if a third party, Ishmael talking about Israel. My question is, if that book is about us and for us, where does it tell us from that book, from Allah? Why we went into captivity and how we come back. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's That was my whole point to him. And, and let me add this just to add to your question, right? Because I know you like clarity, right? Let's add this real quick. Okay. Uh, let me see. I believe it's Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah says a good one. Um, let me see. They have a sir who they worship. We should be gathered and buried. Let me try to find it real quick. Give me one second. Find it now. So, okay. Uh, let me see. I think it's uh, 31. Uh, okay, here we go. Jeremiah 31. I want you to listen to this. Now, since he believes in the Quran, since he believes in the Torah, he has no choice. Let's see what the Quranic writers would have believed in, even though I don't believe them as the Quranic writers. You know what I'm saying? If we get to uh, Bakim and all of them, which is a whole nother story. If somebody want to debate me on the history of the Quran and legitimacy, that's another argument. Jeremiah 31. So let's see if it ever went to Ishmael. Everybody in the chat, let's see if the covenant ever went to Ishmael. Watch this. Jeremiah 31 and 30. I'll start at uh, okay. I started 31 and 31. It says, Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. Right? So now you got to ask him, is this a new covenant? Is the Quran under the new covenant? Because let's see what the let's see what the Bible says about the new covenant. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. I don't see Ishmael in here nowhere. I don't see Ishmael. Let's skip on down. Watch this. Watch this. It's going to get real ugly now. Uh, it says, uh, verse 35, Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night. Now, y'all looking up, right? Y'all still see the sun. Y'all still see the moon and the stars. Watch what this say. Which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. So y'all still see the seas. Y'all hear them roars, right? When you go to Lake Michigan and all that. Listen to this. Verse 36. If those ordinances depart from before me, meaning it ain't no more sun, it ain't no more moon, it ain't no more sea, it says, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the sea of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Behold. So what this is telling you is the nation of Israel is still intact, 
we still a priest as long as you see that stuff in the hot in 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 the in the skies and the seas and all that we still them people now you can go ahead all right all right thanks a lot brother we're gonna move over to brother Yai Kim the submitter Yai Kim what's good Salam alaikum Can we go to Oh yeah. Um, is there anywhere in the Quran does it mention or speak of um, our people specifically? Yes. Yeah. I mean, wherever it speaks of the children of Israel or the people of the Scripture or the people of the Book, it is referring specifically to the children of Israel. Okay. Uh, and uh, it also labels us as Nasrani or Nazarites, which is uh, mistranslated to Christians. It also labels us as Yahudi or uh, Yahud, uh, which is mistranslated to Jews, uh, which when you're reading the mistranslations, you would think it is referring to the religions uh, of Judaism and, Christ and Christian, when in all actuality it is referring specifically to the people. Church of Israel. All right, can we go to um, Sora 65, verse 4? It says, And we'll provide for him. Is that the right word? Oh, yeah. It says, And we'll provide for him from where he accepts not. And he who puts his trust in Allah, he is sufficient for him. Verily, Allah will accomplish his purpose for everything has Allah appointed a measure. Okay, wait, wait. And if you, and if you are in doubt as to such of your women as to spare a monthly courses, then know that the prescribed period for them is three months. And the same is for such as have not had their monthly courses yet. And as for those who are with child, their period shall be until they are delivered of their burden. And whoso fears Allah, he will provide facilities for him in his affair. Now, when it makes reference to... And as for such, they have had not their monthly courses yet. What are you getting out of this verse, bro? Uh, bro? It's, it, uh, actually, the word yet is not there. Uh, it, I mean, if you look at the entire verses in, in its context, uh, we have to understand biology and some science. Uh, when, well, yeah, the word's uh, not the, the word uh, "get" is not there, but yeah, the word yeah, um, but it, but, it, but it is it, so it is referring to being in a state in which women are not having their monthly cycle. We know that state to be known as menopause. So we have to look at the entire thing. Going back to verse one, this is this is talking about when you people divorce the women. So this is talking about uh, a a a system in which we must follow. When it is when we are now thinking about divorce, the, you have to wait a specific time uh, uh, in order for the divorce to be complete, in order to determine if that woman is pregnant. So, but it also but it's telling uh, the believers that there may be women who are, who are in a state of not having their monthly cycle. So you're not going to be able to tell whether or not she's pregnant. So it says. As for the women who have not reached menopause, if you have any doubts, their interim should be three months. So that means if if they're not having their monthly cycles, we must wait three months. And in that three months, uh, we uh, we should be able to determine whether or not that woman is pregnant. As for those who do not menstruate, you see, and discover that they are pregnant. So now it's telling us that uh, if they are not menstruating, and we waited that three months. 
and we discover that they are pregnant, their interim ends upon giving birth. So now that, that lets us know that you cannot divorce a woman through uh, while she is uh, uh, pregnant. So therefore, uh, you must wait for the uh, completion of the divorce proceedings, and that is three months. Uh, but you may divorce a woman later in age, and she may not be having her monthly cycles, and uh, and we may not be able to, to determine if she's uh, with child or not. So that, and if you're going to the, the pre puberty and talking about adolescence, and that's your mind is in the gutter, and it goes back to uh, just our nature of taking words out of context and leaning towards the most vile and disgusting rather than looking at truth. But uh, that's what that's what it is talking about. About women who have reached menopause. They are not having their monthly cycles. All right, brother, let's go to um Sora four verse thirty four. It says Yeah, this is start with the first statement. Sir, four, verse 34, the men are made responsible for the women. Huh. And best believe that if this is that this is coming from the Lord of the universe, that we will be held accountable. If anyone tells you that you're responsible for anything, anything after this, you should know that if you're told that you're responsible for something, that there are expectations that come with that word responsible. All right, let me and if you go to where it just kind of go, it goes against the whole let me idea. Read the verse first, brother, for the people. Yeah, it says right. the men are made responsible for the women. All right, brother, and a lot brother, let, them. let me read the verse first for the people. Oh, so I, thought you said, I thought you said you go ahead and read it. I'll go ahead. Men are guardians over women because Allah has made some of them excel others, and because they spend of their wealth. So virtuous women are those who are obedient and guard the secrets of their husbands with Allah's protection. And as for those who, on whose part you fear disobedience, admonish them and leave them alone in their beds and chastise them. Then if they obey you, seek a way against them. Surely Allah is great. So, um, yeah, the word chastise, you know, and this translation could be interpreted for uh, beat them lightly. Okay. And you have, you have uh, I mean, so, I mean, is there yeah, something that um, you feel as though is uh, acceptable to beat women? It's, it's not. Well, first, uh, we, first thing first, you, we have to understand and take the uh, verse in, in this truth in this uh, context. Is the it men okay are made women like the men are made. No, it's not. But uh, we got to understand. That's what the is, verse just said. Is the righteous women? The righteous women will cheerfully accept this arrangement since it is Allah's commandment and honor their husbands during their absence. So uh, this is specifically referring to uh, the, the dishonor. Of their husband during their absence. Yeah. Um, that okay. If, so if, the, if, if, woman, if a woman, if, if, if a woman goes against, the woman is, if I want, dishonoring I want, you, brother, brother, I want, I want, I want you to answer the question. That's what I want you to do right now. Is it okay if a woman is disobedient? Is it okay to be her lightly? Uh, uh, it is. Uh, if a woman is bringing another man into my home um, during my absence, uh, and I've done these steps, in all honesty. It wouldn't even get to this moment. But I'm telling you right now, if a man is, if I come home and find a man in my home, everybody's getting beat. You, you, you understand? Especially well, I mean, if we've the already done. Not say, because, that, the, the, the verse uh, did not say specifically. That's, that's, uh, the verse did not say is, specifically and, and that's, and that if she brings a man in the home. Hold on a second, bro. Hold on a second now. The verse did not say specifically if she brings a man in the home. So I don't even know why you brought that up. It yeah. said if yes, she's it does, disobedient, it, yes, it, does. It, said, it said if she's disobedient, then you can beat her lightly. That's what it said. So no, is no, that but, is that something that you follow? You being a uh, um, do you confirm that? Uh, I, I confirm that uh, if a, if can you be her lightly or not? 
you are responsible again as a person that was responsible uh, I wouldn't even allow it to get to that point uh, there's uh, steps that's already been uh, listed can you be her lightly that. or not uh, brother? not not whether uh, you you'll take this there's step. steps before according that according to uh, the Quran yeah, can you be there. her lightly or uh, not yes or no yes you can that's what yes you can yeah okay thank you that's all you had to say mm -hmm. bro all that bug dancing no, I mean that's, that's how it is. I mean, uh, if uh, you if you violate the law, uh, if a woman violates the law with a police officer, you, you could you could beat the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're not, you're not, if you think, I mean, you could beat the ass. You, not, you could beat the ass. That's you like you don't said it. You, you don't beat anyone's ass. You're responsible. You could beat the ass. You, you said it. You said it you already. You your said, yeah, you're you responsible for your car. You don't beat. You don't beat your car. You got it. You said you said you could beat her ass. That's what you just said. You don't beat something that you're responsible for. That, okay, you don't yeah, abuse you anything saying, you're okay, responsible you're saying you can be the ass then. Okay, you don't, cool. you don't abuse it. You don't abuse anything you're responsible for. All right, so why are you I'm, trying to justify what he said? I mean, I, I, as a as a person that's responsible for my household, for my wife, for you're my allowed family, to be the ass. If a woman, if a woman is dis uh, is dishonoring uh, you my house, and uh, and and we've done all these steps, why, why I'm like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna allow to get that You just said you answered the question, bro. But is. Uh, but yeah, you can I'm just don't understand how this how this the best how this pertaining to uh, the best how this pertaining to the best. This is uh, as you can see, this establishes the fact that we are responsible uh, for. Uh, you can be wives. responsible for. Why are you not focusing on that? Say that. Won't you say that five times? Say that we're responsible for our women. Yeah, yeah. Because that's you what can, it says. Well, you can be responsible for somebody yeah, and not be the ass. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, same way, same to the uh, the police officers and the correction officers are responsible for people. But hey, they beat ass too if they need to. Yeah, they call but that no police one, brutality. Not, they call that. Not, they call that police brutality. No, not, that's what they call no, it. It's not, it's not. But it's not. I mean, if you think someone, if you think it's t telling you to uh, bruise and to beat and to they uh, call, call it police brutality. Arm, that's what that's, they call that it. Is, uh, you, that is the opposite of being responsible. If you think that is being responsible, then you don't even understand the first statement of the of the verse. If you if you think that you're hitting someone, causing and inflicting pain. And you and you're saying you're saying to yourself, I'm fulfilling my deeds of being responsible and taking care. Then you're not understanding the scripture. You're, I mean, as you can see, you just there was told other me that steps. You said you could beat them like uh, uh, that's what you said. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, notice the other steps that's uh, that's set up there before. Yeah. Notice the, 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 the notice the declaration that that, 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 that that before you even got to that point, there should be a complete understanding that you are responsible for. Uh, the person that he has blessed you with to be your life, and why? Why would you even uh, think when it, when it hits the fame, you could be that? And then I, I'm letting you know. I mean, uh, I, I am like the law enforcement officer in my home, and I'm letting you know there are certain things I'm not going to allow in my home. And I, but me and my wife, we are under an understanding. So she, she knows that's not going right, to happen. Brother, but if brother, something why, like that why, happens, brother, why you, like that talking, happens, you answered the there's question, steps, bro? There's steps. Brother, yeah, there's you steps. I mean, the you question, understand. There's brother, steps. Why you still but want to talk about it? I'm telling you right now. I'm just, I'm just saying you, that you, it's not. Right, a, brother, yeah, you are not confident. You're not confident in going to I already know that because you, Philip, though, you still got to explain something that it was already made clear that you said. Because you're making a big You can beat her lightly. Yeah. And you're making a big deal, and if you're thinking I that I didn't make a big deal, I was moving off. forward to you kept on talking about okay, well, it. Let's, let's go ahead on a topic, let's get to the topic of the debate. That's what that's what the topic was. I really don't have anything else to say. I mean, we can move forward. Okay, go let's go ahead. All right, all right. Shout out to bo both debaters. Um, it was a very interesting debate. We're gonna now get into the peers vote the peers vote call in now or forever hold your speech this is the solar vision debate league you motherfuckers gonna stop playing with me i didn't curse i said mother uckers <laughs> well i did curse i think i did curse on the job to be the <laughs> stop playing If you mess with me once, I will overlook it. If you mess with me twice, I will overlook it. You mess with me three times, I'm going to beat your ass. Claim, claim, into, claim your inheritance. State your name. Who you vote for? Yeah, yeah, you vote for 
useless, man. Okay, so, yeah, Mikael, man. I gave it to Mikael. He, he, did, he did pretty great. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> peace, peace, peace. Brother Yashar, oh, peace. Man, this one goes out to my brother in the hood. I don't know what my boy was doing over there with that Islamic shuckle buckle, but uh, yeah. Hebrew in the hood, baby. All right, all right. So far, we got two for Hebrews in the hood with the peer vote. And uh, none for Brother Yakim, the submitter. Shout out to the family. We're going to be rocking out tomorrow as well, as well, always. We're going to have, I think it's claimed the inheritance is going to be in the building tomorrow, man. He's going to be going up against, once again, this is going to be part two of their debate. I think they had a debate already earlier this week. Yes, yes, they did. They did for show. Um, Brother Suave BZ. Suave Boss that claimed the inheritance is going to be in the building tomorrow. Uh, does the Bible say, don't pray for white people? Oh, yeah, that's going to be a crazy one right there. You already know what it is. This is your boy, Solomon, Solar Vision Debate League. Tune in. 9 p.m. tomorrow, we're going to keep it rocking outside the cube. Peace, family. Who you vote for? Hey, peace, peace, man. I got to go with the brother, Mikael. Even though I think, you know, both of them barely even stayed on the topic, it was a little weird, you know. But, uh, brother, you yeah, man. You have to attack this Bible to show why it isn't good. And, you know, try to show how your Quran is good. You did do that. All right. Thanks a lot, brother. We, we moving right. forward. We got another caller coming in. Uh, peace. Yeah. Peace. DJ Black Charm. Yeah, I vote, uh, vote for me, Kai. Yeah, you did a great job. All right. All right. Shout out to all DJ right. Black right, Charm, peace. one of the judges. Peace. Uh, Solar Vision Debate League. The call in number is 215-954-9091. Want to judge put it up in the chat room? It's in the chat room, brother. I see it right there. How you asking for the numbers in the chat room? But I believe you cannot call in until we move forward to the people's vote, which we have not done yet. We still are on the... That's probably him, too. Peace, peace, peace. State your name. Who you calling for? Absalom, 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 you're, you're not a member of the debate league, bro. You gotta wait till the people vote. Yahurrah, Yahurrah Ben Nazareth. Who you vote for, brother? Yeah, I vote for uh, Mikael. Yeah, I vote for Alright, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, brother. Thanks a lot, brother. What y'all y'all some anti Islamic dudes today? Y'all anti Islamic? This boy is very biased, man. Come on with that. You know what I'm saying? Where the Muslims at? We Imam Bashir and, and, and Orthodox more. We need some brothers in the building that's gonna represent. Peace, peace, peace. <laughs> Yo, Shalom, my vote goes for brother Mikael. All right, all right, all right, Table of Kings, Table of Kings, another judge votes for Mikael. This is just the peer's vote, though, because they were not judges tonight. You know? What's going on, man? We're going to make all y'all niggas take y'all to Shahada. Peace, family. Out the blue. State your name, who you vote for. Shalom, shalom. Uh, great debate, man. I rocked a lot, man. It's, uh, especially on the uh, format uh, debate. I gotta go with uh, the ambassador, man. Fatality. Now you say you go with who? The ambassador, Mikael. All right, thanks a lot, bro. Peace. Who's calling? Yeah, yeah, you got to call in on the people's vote, bro. You got the what? When I call out for the people's vote, that's when you call in, bro. What? 
Yeah, just call the same number. When I say people's vote, that's when you call in, man. Okay. All right, all right. So the peers' vote is two, four, six, seven votes for Mikael. But give us another minute or so before we move forward to the people's vote, man. You anti Islamists. Let's take a look at the standings, you know. We, you know, this damn get down to the nitty gritty. The nitty gritty. Peace, peace, peace. Brother Emac, who you vote for? Yeah, I want to vote for Yakim. The, the Quran brought people to the Torah, not to the New Testament, bro. All right, all right, all right. Thanks a lot. All right. Emac in the building. Bang like Emac. Ski mask, air it out. Gotta kill witnesses because free beer sticking out. You see Emac down there at the, at the bottom of the rankings. He's, a, he's a undefeated. Y'all better watch for brother Emac. Emac, he's going to surprise a lot of you. He's going to serve as the spoiler. On the Solar Vision Debate League. Yeah, man. This Saturday, man. We're going to have Divine Prospect up in here, man. Peace, peace. Who's calling? All right, brother Epsilon. We're going to get started on the uh, pe people's vote. Epsilon just called in and gave it to Mikael. The people's vote is now in effect. All right. We're getting back to the standings. The people's vote is now in effect. Call in now or forever hold your speech. The number is 215-954-9091. This is the Solar Pitcher Debate League. Mm. So as what we see here, peace, 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 peace. Say your name. Who you vote for? Hey, hey, this is Jay, man. I'm going with y'all, King. Okay. All right, all right. Peace, peace, peace. Say your name. Who you vote for? Uh, brother Big Cow. Yeah. All right. All right. Yes, peace, peace. State your name. Who you vote for? Yeah, hello. My name is Michael Rowan. Um, got a shout out to give it out to my brother, Mikael. He did his thing. Shalom. Thanks a lot, brother. Thanks a lot. All right. All right. All right. So. Peace, peace, peace. State your name. Who you vote for? Javon Israel. Mikael. All right. Thanks a lot, bro. Peace, peace. State your name. Who you vote for? Well, bro, this is Mike D. Got to give it to your king, bro. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So, so far, we got two for Yai Kim. And then we have... Uh, four for Mikael. Tavon gives a peer vote to Yakim. That's the Orthodox Moor. Peace, peace, peace. State your name. Who you vote for? Peace, 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 peace. We got... We got five votes now for my brother Mikael. And we have two votes for Guy Kim, the submitter for the people's vote. Mikael 
won the um, peers vote. That is uh, 2467 to 2. So we are getting to the nitty gritty, man. Maybe the judges round may not even have to count tonight. As you can see in the standings, Mikhail's at 3 and 1. And he could close out. If he has a strong closing out, he could be a person that's up there and may even get a first round bye. What? Well, yeah. Get a first round, um, not a first round bye, but a first round home game. Yeah, man. Got a few debates left, man. Got to be getting it in, though, man. That what's in the blue moon shit, Mikael, ain't flying. This is a high-octane lead. We were very demanding here on Solar Vision Debate League, brother. But when he come in the building, he damn sure bring that information. We already know what it is. You know? So he stands at 3-1 and one right now. And we have Yakim the Submitter. He's at one and three right now. He's still, you know, he still has a chance because he's one and four. He could win off three, get him a double header or something. End up four and four, make the playoffs. You know? So everything, anything's possible here on Solar Vision Debate League. <laughs> yeah. You know, we checking out these standings. Where do you stand, brother? We'll give this um, we'll give this another minute or so before we move to the judges vote. Who do I vote for? Still trying to give myself power and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Peace, 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 peace. Say your name, who you vote for? Mikael Ben Israel, Hebrews in the hood. Peace, peace, peace. So we got two, four, six votes for Mikael, two for Yakim. Now, it's asked in the chat who, who gave. Mikael that only lost. I'm going to let y'all know who gave Mikael that only lost. What happened was, y'all pay attention. Me and him did a, a secret debate, you know, on this same topic, which is better for our people, the Bible or the Quran. And they were judges. We had about three or four judges there you know and that's how he got his only loss so he didn't lose to nobody in the the actual league he lost to um me he lost to me so that that counts as his only loss so it's a little controversial but you know that's his only loss so technically he did not lose to anybody in the league you know so that's 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 pretty much what happened. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much what happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no, he, no, he actually he actually took the L because he was um, I think he I think he called he was called out within the um. After the time that was allotted to him, which was 24 hours before the debate, is a rule set up that if you do that, you will have to take the L. So that's how he got his L. He didn't get his L from debating anyone. He got his L for not following the rules set by Solar Vision Debate League. Yes, yes, yes. So with that being said, we can now go to the judges round the debate. Has been won by uh, Mikael, so he goes to four one. Um, 
and he'll qualify for the playoffs once he uh, gets another debate in. That put him at six debates, so he's at four and one now. Um, my vote also goes to Mikhail. He just had the stronger argument. He stuck to the topic. He posed um, side arguments, which, which we want to take it um, for what it is. Um, but he actually dealt more so on top. He was more so on topic than Brother Got Kim the Submitter. Um, shout out to both debaters. This is the Solar Vision Debate League. We don't want to linger this on too long because it is 1 o'clock in the morning. Even though we had some debates last longer than this that started at 9 o'clock. <laughs> That's just how we do here at Soul Love Vision Debate League, man. Y'all just, you know, y'all not ready, man. So, you know, we're going to close out with the playoff preview, family. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Solar Mind. Solar Mind. Welcome, Welcome to Soul Love Vision Debate League. The playoff preview. Home of SVDL Bowl 1. We are now going into the final weeks of the regular season here on Solar Vision Debate League, and every debater wants to be heard. Some debaters are fighting to make the playoffs, others are trying to secure home field, and the newcomers, huh, they seek to spoil it all. In this jungle, the hounds are swarming, the wolves are biting, and the lions are roaring. Calm down, young lion, calm down, young lion. <laughs> Prolong his days Damn. and the pleasure of Yahuwah prosper in his hands, and he would see the results of the suffering of his life and be satisfied with his life. Your, your, your round is up, brother. I'm down, I'm young done. Lion. However, the king of this jungle is the gorilla. We see in Matthew chapter 17. Oh, hold on, hold on. Where, where is that a law to pro You're saying. Let me, let me, hold on. Let, hold on. let me ask brother, a brother, brother, this is why I'm asking these questions. This is why I asked you about Amos 3. You gotta let me answer the question first. No because, no, because you literally added to the Bible right here. This is why I'm asking you. No, I did not add to the Bible. You did not let Here's me answer. Did it. You're, you're going to Matthew 17, but you're telling me that this is a law of the prophets. Show me that this is a law of the prophets. That's why I'm asking you. Multi doesn't keep secrets from his um from um is Can you show me that in the Bible? Can you show me that in the Bible? Keep it a secret. The, the, the oil Bible. is the spirit. All right, but look, let me answer your question. Let me answer your question, right? Because you asked a good question. It's saying right there that David's seed, right? He should never want a man to serve before him to sit on his throne, sons of Levites. But you're forgetting the text, man. What happened to Jeconiah, right? The king of Israel. David didn't, his seed did not endure upon the throne forever. So you're misunderstanding something. Uh, because he sat there, he sat there and told him, no, he sat there and told him that Jeremiah, right? That he shall not want a man to sit upon his throne. So what happened? What huh? the hell is the word? What does the word mean? Anonymous is in the building. What do the word mean, bro? What do the word mean? Okay, and you said it's a system formed against us. What's that system formed against us you're talking about? White supremacy. Okay, and you said it was an economic and social struggle. Who's that an economic and social struggle against? Against. Everybody. Everybody like who, brother? Everybody like everybody other than the top one percent that run this motherfucker. Okay, so what you what I want y'all to realize, judges, is this brother didn't say black accountability not one time. Let me hit him in the head with some proof. Let's go to the proof now. Let's go to the slides. Uh, I'm gonna put something on the screen for you, brother. I want you to see, and then let, let's let's just deal with it. So this is the Carter Commission. And I don't know if you can see it, but it, it, it specifically says that racism is the cause of all societal problems. What, what do you have to say about that? Do, do you disagree with these findings or do you think that they made something up? What do you think about that? Uh, those findings, what did you try to say again? They said that white racism is essentially responsible for the explosive mixture which has been accumulating in all of the problems in society. What they yeah. said. Well, what do you yeah. say about that stuff? Yeah. That, that is true? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That all right, cool. Got, all right. Say no more. I heard what I heard about you. The Hadith say that pre-puberty starts in menstruation. That came out of right. your mouth. 
right? Before, but before so you I, came, address, I address, I address my issue with that, right? Then I should be the Quran where there's where there where that doesn't show. Now any Shia I know worth his salt. Wait, then any part of the Hadith that don't match the Quran, you throw against the wall. I don't see you doing that right now. I can't wait for this. Man, I'm finna have you fucking shuffle bucket, nigga. You over here reading templates and shit. So, uh, just dealing with your blood stuff. Cause you do, well, let me ask you. Do you believe the flood story as a literal fact that it happened literally as stated in Genesis? I can't say, I can't say whether or not it literally happened that way, meaning I can say how, one, how high the flood was, how high it went, if it literally covered up to the heavens or if that was a part of speech. But I do believe that there was a flood. The question is, um, how big the flood actually was, meaning how high did the water go? So, if you had, you know, to estimate how high the water was, which you might I can't estimate. Oh, I forgot you believe in it, which doesn't allow you to add a takeaway. I apologize. Ask me, does incest, people that commit incest, is there evidence of genetic mutations or defects? I agree with you, yes. But I also said, counter to that, there's no evidence that this occurs in the line of the Muslims or the Ammonites. No like, evidence. Like, just, like, so yo, anything like, you're dude, asking me, I said it. Is that not written in your fucking law? Is that not written in your law? It's not written in the fucking law. What's in that is a hypothetical. All right, Do you all right, understand brother, what brother, 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 What was the verse that you read, brother? Do you understand what a hypothetical uh, argument is? Brother, brother, what, what is the verse that you read, bro? And, and they were commanded to guard the. Oh, no, no, I'm gonna waste time. Where is that at? Where is that at? It's in Matthew 28. Nigga, Matthew 28. We think of Matthew after was added 200 years later, bro. That shit is the motherfucking foolishness that the Greeks put in there to be a stumbling block to the Jews. I told oh. you, you know, Martin. Oh, oh, oh man. Martin 16 and 8 stop right there. Oh, oh the Bible was there. That's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's your argument. The Bible was there. My question is this. Here goes go the question. No, I asked you a question. No, you didn't ask me a question. your question, bro. You said, how did they get the motherfucking out? No, listen. Nigga, you can't even beat yourself, you stupid ass nigga. Shut up. Nigga, get some words under your belt, then come talk to me. You the goddamn Jacuni ass nigga. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. Man, you know, you know, let's kind of deal with this. Let's kind of see if we can deal with these, these, this text. You man. done? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You done yet, old head? Let me, let me get out. Old head, nigga. I'm 43 years old. I, that's not old, nigga. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Let, let's do it like this. You want to do the ignorant shit? We can do yeah, it. We, we can do it, right, nigga. 50 oh, years old. G Con, get out of here, nigga. You don't even belong on this channel. You don't even belong on this channel, G Con. What kind of information was y'all going to bring to, was, to shut each other we down? Was, we was going I, I, to, debate. I wanted to The debate topic was what is the best plan for black people over the next 50 years? He thinks that is a dumb debate topic. So what I said was. What I, I, I mean, I, got to, hold wait. On, hold on. Okay. Out to him. He agreed we were supposed to debate on Halloween and he did not show up. All right. And he comes in after the fact and says, Oh, you a brother polite, you scam, and I don't want to debate. You're not bro, nigga. Wait, hold on, where Judah. Was all that, where was all Trap. that energy? Where, where was Wait. all that energy when we were supposed when we was figured out? You're not bro, nigga. The, the, the Wait, Judah, was, Judah, 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 Judah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, brother. Strap, hold on. Right now. You presented, you presented the topic. And Judah, did you agree to it? Yes or no, bro? Crickets. Crickets, because he's an old ass fool. He an old ass training loving stuttering fool. Wow. Okay, well, okay. Nigga, Look, hold nigga, up, hold up, hold up. Abdul, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So let's let's look, look, look. We could we can get anybody could get to the name calling. They have no access forever. So how is the Mashiach having the Moabites' blood when they have no access forever? Explain that because to the I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll tell you why. Very yeah, simple. Right you already according read to the scripture. scripture. No. Already, Not according, according to your according, according, to the according to the scripture. If you shut up, I read. All right. I already read it for you. That was according to the law. I already showed you as were nine that they never kept. They didn't keep the law. The Levites. North like priest, I said, North like I just read, 
I just read right now. that the Moabites will they never enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. They, they, What's they, going they, on bro. with this, man? They never this is no what I was talking blood. about when they I initially started this debate blood, about the false they teaching. Never no pure blood. I said, I love my health, but all this false they teaching, they got to no stop. See, I'm that young gunner that's coming to stop all these. They never kept no pure bloodline, bro. Whoa. All I got to say is, it's going to be a wild and crazy postseason on Solar Vision Debate League.